people. So uh, I'm starting my live stream just so you know. So they might hear you a, a little bit of what you're saying. But go ahead. You starting your live stream? Live my live stream, F and I live this morning, baby. I'm coming to the. I'm, I'm going F. I'm going live this morning. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, I'm going to go through your warranty information with you this morning. That comes with the vehicle. Please ask me any questions if you got them. Your vehicle comes with the three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper coverage, except for the bumpers aren't going to be covered. Also, it comes with the five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain coverage. Now, I'll write limited on here because not everything under the engine, transmission, and drivetrain are going to be covered. Just your internal lubricated parts, but coverage is coverage. And my customers like to get the longest coverage they can get. You have any questions about that, sir? All right, and then you transition, right? Okay. All right, so so I, what I want you to do, man, is when we get off this call, I want you to grab your iPhone, okay? And I want you to, I, I want you to go in your office and I want you to write down exactly what we just talked about as far as, as, far as going through the initial part of the presentation, okay? I want you to write, I want you to write it down, okay? And then <clears throat> I want you to record yourself saying it 10 times, and I want you to be able to get through it. Uh, I want you to record yourself saying it until you can get all the way through it fluently, okay? I got you. So, so go over it, go over it, go over it until you're fluent, until it comes, and you're able to, you're able just to, it just comes off the top of your head, okay? And then... When, you, when, it, when it's coming and it's going off the top of your head, like you're able just to spit it out like it's second nature, then, you're, then you'll start using it when you're, when, you're, when you're with the customer, okay? Then you'll start using it. Then you'll start saying it when you're with the customer, okay? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Hang on for me just a second. Good morning, good morning. I appreciate you guys jumping on the stream. Please say good morning and please tell me where you're from. Good morning, Miguel. Good morning, Roger Smith. Good morning. But uh, that's what I want you to do, man. And I want you to do that this morning, okay? I want you to, I, I want you to, I want you to pop open your phone, hit record, and I want you to go through it. Exactly what we talked about this morning, okay? I want you to, I want you to first write it out, okay? And then I want you to record yourself saying it ten times until you get through it flawlessly, until it rolls off your tongue. What's that? And then I can send it back to you and you can check it out. Yeah, because I wanted to I wanted to roll flawlessly. I wanted to roll off your tongue. So so record yourself saying it enough, at least ten times. If it takes more than ten, do it more than ten. Okay? Like I told you, man, I'm I'm ten, twelve thousand deliveries in, man. So I've been you know what I mean? That's why it rolls off my tongue. So I, I want you to I want you to say it. Until it rolls off your tongue, and then once you're uh, once you get that video where it rolls off your tongue, then save that. It should be it should be a three second video, right? I mean, it doesn't take long to say it, so it should be a three second video, and then text me that video. Let me see it. Okay, brother, I appreciate you, man. Okay, man, talk to you soon. All right, jump on this F live, jump on this uh, this live stream, big dog. I'm about to do it now, man. Thanks, okay. man. All right, man. See you, bye. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning, champion. Karen, good morning. Appreciate you guys being on here. We going to get it started here in just a few. Good morning, champions. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Listen, we are going to crush October. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. We're, we're, we're going to take the opportunity now to crush October. And we're going to do whatever is necessary, whatever it takes to crush the end of the year and then crush 2018. Listen to me. We taking F and I back. Come on with it. We're going to wait for some more people to join up in here. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, champion. Appreciate you being here. Terry and Joe. Good morning, champions. Appreciate you being here. Good morning from Indiana. That's where I started my automotive career. That's where I grew up. Indiana, come on with it. Appreciate you guys being on here. We're going to wait for a few more people to get in here. Good morning, guys. 
Please say good morning and then tell me where you're where you're watching me from. Please say good morning and then tell me where you're watching me from. Evan, good morning, champion. Anthony, Anthony, good morning, champion. Mark Marson, I can't say that last name, but good morning. Karen from Michigan, good morning. John, good morning from Jupiter, Florida. Juan Gayton, good morning, champion. Quentin Gentry, good morning, champion. Shane Lee, good morning, champion. Jeffrey Jackson from Louisiana, good morning, champion. Dan Folsom, good morning, champion. Trey, good morning from Ohio. Good morning, champion. Prince, good morning, champion. Yara, good morning from Kentucky. Good morning, champion. Appreciate you. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the likes. Love you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Brian Bowman, good morning, champion. Appreciate you being on here from Belvedere, Illinois. Appreciate you. Thank you for being on this call. Robin Schumann from Florida. Good morning to you, Robin. I know you're going to have a great day today. Brian Redman, let's rock. Good morning to you, champion. Appreciate you being on here this morning. Let's get this thing started. Anthony Mars Galano Jr., good morning, man. Good morning. We're going to give it 60 more seconds, Anthony, and then we will get it started, champion. I appreciate you being here. John, good morning. Sharpen the axe at all times. At all times, John, at all times, sharpen the axe. Sharpen your axe at all times. Lee, good morning. Oh, happy birthday to you, Lee. It's your 40th. Happy birthday to you, champion. Chris, good morning, champion. Good morning. Give it about 30 more seconds, Chris, and we are going to roll, champion. We are going to roll. Good morning to you, my brother. Good morning. Appreciate you being on here. All right, let's go ahead and dive on this bad boy. Michael, good morning to you, champion. I appreciate you being on here. From Indy, good morning to you, champion. Appreciate you. I'll be up in Indy November 6th and 7th, man. I hope I get the opportunity to meet you, man. Abe, good morning, man. First time tuning in? Let's see what you got. Come on, man. If you want to see what I got, jump on my YouTube channel, baby. It's all on there, man. You know who Shaka Dyson is. Good morning to you. I appreciate you being on here. But hey, man, so listen, all right, so appreciate everybody being on here. And listen, th 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 this, this particular live stream is, is, is pretty important to me, man. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very important to me. Um, this, is, this is the fifth of the month, okay? At the end of every month, at the end, it never fails. At the end of every month, I get dealers who reach out to me looking for F&I people, and I get F&I people reaching out to me saying, hey, uh, I don't know what's up with my job. I don't know if I'm going to have one after the first, all right? So what I want to do is I want to focus on how we can, how, what can we do about those type of situations? We all know what happens. We all know what happens at the end of each month, right? We all know that in the end of a bad month, an F&I manager is feeling insecure about their job and, and a dealer is out looking for that next best thing. We all know that this happens. It's happened my whole career. It's happened. It happens month in and month out. And I'm somebody that people reach out to both on the F&I side and both from the dealer side. So what I want to talk to the F&I guys about is the F&I guys and gals about is your value proposition. What is your value proposition, right? What, what, what is it that separates you? What is it that separates you from the next F&I manager? What is it that, that, that removes you from being in the middle of the pack, but yet puts you and separates you from the pack? What makes you more valuable than every other F&I manager out there that can possibly get in touch with your dealer? What, what is it about you? What is your value proposition, right? Well, I'm talking to the professionals this morning. I'm talking to those who want to take it to the next level this morning. What is your value proposition, right? Are you, are you someone who is different in F&I? Do you bring something different to the table in F&I? Or are you someone who is just like everyone else? I had a conversation with a dealer two days ago, 
Two days ago, Monday, three days ago, sorry, it was Monday. After the, after the close of the month, the dealer called me. He had just hired an F&I manager. The F&I manager been in there 90 days, been in there since July. 90 days, and this dealer's already looking for someone else. And I asked him, I said, well, what's going on with the dude you just hired? You just hired somebody 90 days ago. You just, we just talked. You just hired somebody in July. What, what What's going on? What's happening? You liked him. You hired him. Right, you talked to him, you interviewed him, you talked to him three or four times before you hired him. What happened? Why are you looking again now? Right? And what the dealer replied back to me was is man, the dude interviewed good. He came in, he had the numbers, right? He interviewed good, right? He said all the right things, but in the last 90 days, he turned out to be exactly like the person that was in there before. Him, and the person that was in there before him, right? What happened was, is this F&I manager did well enough, had, had, had his resume doctored up enough to where it looked good enough to get the opportunity to interview. And then in the interview, he practiced enough to get the specific position in F&I, right? But then in that 90 days time, in that adaption period, in that, uh, where you adapt, and in that period where you, where you are, are where you are in the spotlight and you have to show your stuff. What happened was is that this Pacific F and I manager turned out to, to be just like everyone else. Right? And listen to me, the reason why dealers look, the reason why they're constantly looking for new talent is because they're looking for new talent. Right? They're looking for something different. They want something different brought to the table. So I'm asking you, what is your value proposition? What's different about you? What is your specific niche in F&I? What, what can you bring to the table that that dealer hasn't already seen before? What can you bring to the table that's new to that dealer, that takes that dealer to the next level? What is it? What is your value proposition? This is what I want you to think about. In addition to being the person that shows up on time, in addition to being the person that's that's professional, in addition to being the one that has a great resume, right, and great credentials, right, and have and have lender contact. What is your value proposition? How can you? What is it that you can do with that dealership? What can you implement to take that dealer to the next level, so that that dealer will never ever ever want to look to replace you? What is it? What is your value proposition? Right? Are you someone that gets to the dealership and, 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 and you get in there, you interview correctly, you get into the position and then, and then once you start getting deals, right? You start averaging the same as everybody else because you start listening to their negative puke. Right, telling you what you can't generate in a Honda store or a Toyota store or in a Volkswagen store. You started buying into it, right? You started buying into the fact that since Volkswagen came out with a longer, longer manufacturer's warranty, you're not going to be able to sell your extended service contracts. Or since it's a Toyota or it's a Honda, those customers are harder to sell extended service. You started buying into it, right? So you started your 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 penetration started blending in with everybody else's. Right. Your PVR started blending in with everybody else's. Right. Your lease, your lease number started blending in with everybody else's. The cash, your cash customers. Right. You're not able to generate revenue or very minimal revenue because the other people are spitting the negative puke to you. Right. Because you're listening to them. Right. You're listening to the value they bring to the table and you're implementing that. And you're starting to implement that into your process. Right. So what happens is, is your value prep proposition that you were initially brought to the table. Now it's shrinking if it's not going away altogether. Right. So you got to think about, hey, every single day, what is your safeguard in F&I? When you get the position, when you're in the store, what is your safeguard? Huh? Your safeguard is you paying attention to your value proposition. Listen to me. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you guys something, and I want you to type the answer into the comment. Okay. I want. I want to ask you guys something. And I want you to type the answer into the comment. Okay. Would you, if you knew that if you bought lottery tickets, right, that no matter what numbers you use, no matter what combination of numbers you used. When you're buying a lottery ticket, if you knew that no matter what combination, no matter what numbers you use, that you would not win, right? That, that there is zero chance that you would win ever. Let me ask you a question. Would you continue to go out and buy lottery tickets?
Let me see the answers. If you knew that no matter what numbers you use, no matter what combination of numbers you used, would you continue to go out and buy lottery tickets? Yes or no? Yes or no? Let me see the comments. Yes or no? If you knew that no matter what combination of numbers you used, if you no matter what numbers you use, what combination, would you continue to go out and purchase lottery tickets? That's right, Robin. No. Nestor. No. Tyrell. No. Right? Of course not. Right? Quentin Gentry. No. Right? The answer is absolutely no. But here's the deal. What do we do in F and I? We don't use numbers, but we use excuses, right? We use excuses. When, when, when we do a cash deal and we're not able to generate revenue and the first thing our customers do is walk out of our office, right? We walk up to the GM or the manager and the GM and the manager, the first thing they ask us is what? How did you do on that deal, right? And the first thing we want to say when we don't generate any revenue is we want to spit off a, an excuse, right? We want to spit off a, a reason, an excuse masked as a reason, right? We want to spit off an excuse where here's the deal. Here's what you have to know. When it comes to the decision makers in your store, when it comes to the GMs in your store, listen to me. The excuses are like those lottery numbers. It will never, ever, 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 ever work. Do you get it? It will never work, right? So if you said, hey, hell no, there's no way that I would ever use numbers or play the lottery if I knew that no matter what numbers I used or combinations that I used would never work, there's no way that I'd play the lottery. Listen to me. There's no way ever that the excuses that you use in F&I will ever work. So what do we have to do? We have to stop using them, right? I need you to be different, the, deal, the, the, the members of the F920 group, I need you to be different, right? Because listen to me, your GM and your dealers are looking for different people to add to their team, right? I don't want to get the phone calls at the end of the month where, where the GMs and the dealers are looking for new people. I don't want to get the phone calls from the F&I managers who, who, who don't feel like they may, ha may or may not have a job at the end of the month. I don't want that. What I want is, is I want you guys to get into those positions and focus on your value proposition every single hour of every single day that you're in the F&I office. Right. Because as long as you're focusing on the value and not the excuse, as long as you're focusing on being different and not the same, as long as you're focused on getting ahead and not behind, as long as you're focused on being the best and not like the rest. And listen to me, you don't never have to worry about being out of a position. You feel me? Are you with me this morning? What is your value proposition? What is it that you're bringing to the table? What are you going to go into your dealership and bring to the table this morning that will make everyone pay attention to you, right? What are you going to do different than you ever have today that's going to make everyone take notice, right? What, what are you going to do different in your Saturday morning meetings that are going to allow people to see the value in you, the F&I person? What are you, what, what are you going to do differently with the process today? Huh? Are you going to do the same old, same old process that you typically do? Customer comes in, they go through the cycle of purchasing a vehicle, but they never meet the finance manager until it's time for the deal to go back to finance. And then the finance manager comes out there, does the same old humdrum interview, and then brings the customer back to their office. 20 minutes later, sits them down and they go through the ancillary paperwork and then they whip out this old humdrum menu right? That doesn't allow you to sell any product. Are you going to take the customer through that? Because where's the value? It's just like what they've been through and experienced before, right? What is your value proposition? What is it that you're doing differently? Are you valuing? Are you valuing the time, the customer's time? Are you finding ways to take time out of the equation when it comes to the process? Are you valuing that customer's time? Huh? Are you shortening up the process? Right, the, the the car buying process for the customer. Are you valuing their time? And then when you when you bring them back to F and I, are you giving them a dynamic value build presentation that allows them the, the, to see the value in what it is that you have to offer? It allows them to see so much value that they gotta have your product, huh? Are are, are you doing it that way, or are you doing it the same old same old way? What's your value proposition? Because here's the deal. No matter, no matter what the situation is, good or bad, it's your fault. It's your responsibility. 
And I get F&I managers who call me every day and they'll tell me about the wrong that's going on in their dealership, right? They'll tell me about managers who don't like them, right? They'll tell me that if they get let go, it's the manager's fault. It's their GM's fault. The GM didn't like them. Or they'll say, hey, you know what? I don't know why I got let go. I ran better numbers than they ever have. Right. Well, what happens is, is that the F&I manager gets stuck on the fact that they ran better numbers than that dealership ever has. But what they're not saying is that that dealership in the past have run junior varsity numbers. Right. They they they, they had they had a JV team in the F&I department. And then when your GM hired you, he was looking for varsity. Right. Your, your, your GM was looking. Your owner was they were looking for a varsity team member. Right. But you were comparing yourself to junior varsity. You were comparing yourself to amateurs when you're a pro, right? So the fact that you get got let go because you ran better numbers than they did in the past don't mean anything. You didn't bring a value proposition to the table, right? I need you guys to focus on your value because listen to me, you're worth, you are worth it. Right. But if you're sick of your pay plan changing, understand that it's got nothing to do with the pay plan. It's got everything to do with your perceived value. Right. I saw somebody post something in the F&I 20 group sometime this week that said their GSM think, believes that they are overpaid. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. It said that they that their GSM, I, I, I might try to find that post later, but it said that their GSM said that they were overpaid. And then that finance manager went, proceeded to ask, hey, what is the common pay plan out there in, in the F&I world? And my response was, there's zero chance that you can be overpaid because you are paid on what you produce. You're paid on what you produce. But what the general, general sales manager is saying instead is, is listen to me. I don't see the value in you, right? Your value proposition went away. Right. You talked a good game before you got in the F&I office. Right. You talked a good game when we were considering you for the position. You talked a good game for the first week that you were there. But then what happened was is all the noise. You started listening to all the noise and you started changing. You started changing from that person that we interviewed to the common person. Right. You started talking. You started becoming the person that couldn't generate revenue on a cash deal. But instead of taking responsibility for it, you started making excuses, masters, reasons. Right. You start instead of being that person that can generate revenue on a lease, you started complaining about the leases. Right. The start of taking responsibility for not being able to generate revenue on a stripped out cash deal you start, or, or a stripped out finance deal, you started making excuses about and complaining about the stripped out finance deal. Listen to me. You need to pay attention to your value because you're worth more than that. You're worth more than that. You are an A player. You don't come off the bench in F&I. You are an A player. You are always in the game. Understand that you are always in the uh, in the game. The spotlight is always on you. People always want to know what they can grab from the F&I department. That's why it's the most micro reported department in the dealership. Right. That's why we have to explain our numbers and talk about our numbers after every single deal. Right. When every other department gets to talk about their numbers once a week or maybe once once in, in, in the morning sales meetings. But we we talk about our numbers after every single deal. Why? Because they're looking for the value. They want to ask you, hey, am I getting value? Are you showing me your value proposition every single day? Or are you making excuses like everybody else? Are you complaining more than you're training? Are you, are you, are you focused on what's wrong with the situation or wrong with the dealership versus what you can do to make the situation right? Are you focused on what you don't like about the desking process versus how you can in, insert yourself in the desking process to make it better? Are you focusing on getting stripped out payments versus going out there and tee on that customer yourself? Are you focused on the hours that you work in your dealership versus wanting to stay there as long as it takes to take care of the customer? What's your value proposition? This is what I need for you to understand is that your dealer, your GM hired you there for a reason. They hired you because of the perceived value. And once you get that position, I need you to hold on. I need you to hold on and I need you to take it to the next level. 
right? Because like I tell you guys every single week, this is about bringing honor back to the FNI department. And listen to me, the only way that we bring honor back to the FNI department is day, is every single deal, every single day, every single month, every single week, month in, month out. Come on. This is how we bring honor back to the FNI department. By not slacking and taking a back seat, by not changing, by not changing into someone else after we get the position, by bringing more value to the table than what we initially told, said that we were going to do. This is how we bring honor back to the F&I department. What is your value proposition? Come on. I need for everybody on this thread to step up, right? Level up, step up and keep reaching higher, Right? Take October, make October an example of the greatness that you bring to the table. It's only the fifth of the month. So you have the opportunity right now to make October the example of the greatness that you bring to the table. And that's what I need from everyone on this call. I need for all of you to make October the example. I need for all of you to show up early. I need for all of you to have a great attitude. I need for all of you to take time out of the process and get customers back to your office. I need for all of you to not do the old humdrum BS menu presentation, but do the value bill presentation that, that pours value and allows value uh, the customer to see all the value. I need for you guys to generate the revenue so that your dealer and your GM knows that they're getting an ROI on their investment in you. I need you to train more than you complain. I need you to focus on the positive more than you do the negative. I need you to focus on taking F&I to the next level. That's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to lead from the front. I'm asking you to not pay attention to those behind you. I'm asking you to not pay attention to those who are negative or telling you what you can't do. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to stay laser focused on your goals. I'm asking you to stay laser focused on the big picture. I'm asking you to stay laser focused on taking or bringing honor back to the F&I. That's what I'm asking you this morning. Make October the example of your greatness. That's what I'm asking you to do this morning. What is your value proposition? Listen to me. What more can you bring to the table? I don't care what they did at your dealership in the past. What more can you do? I don't care what numbers they ran at your dealership in the past. What more can you do? I don't care what the situation was in your dealership in the past before you got there. I'm asking you, what is it that you can bring to the table that can help, that can take your dealership to the next level? What is your value proposition? Listen. My focus every day, my focus for the last two years now has been to be the number one F&I trainer in the automotive industry, right? And I have accomplished that goal. Why? Because every single day I focus on the value proposition that I can bring to the table. Whose life can I touch today? Whose career, whose game, whose ability, whose skill set can I take to the next level? So how do I do that? Not only have I created the number one F&I training platform in the automotive industry, Dealer F&I University, but I also am accessible to all members, to all members of Dealer F&I University 24-7. I do coaching calls with them every day to make sure that they're building their F&I skill set and they're building their F&I intellect. I am always backing them up. Listen, to me. What I know is no other F&I trainers and no other F&I schools out there doing that. I know that you can't train for a week with some old humdrum F&I school and then call them a year later and then staying on the phone with you for an hour to help you out. I know that that's my value proposition. So not only is my value proposition in doing it different, showing you a different way, taking your skill set to the next level, but then allowing you to call me on my cell phone any time of the day, morning, noon, or night, weekday or weekend, and me coaching you live 24-7 to get your skill set to the next level. That's my value proposition, and that's how I stay at number one. You get it? What's your value proposition? What are you bringing to the table that's going to separate you from the pack? That's what I need for you to focus on. What's your value proposition this morning, guys? What are you going to do this morning that's going to help your dealer different than what, what you've been doing or what that dealership has been getting the last 60 days? 
Are you going to have a sales meeting this morning with your salespeople? Are you going to do some coaching, some motivational coaching with your salespeople this morning? Are you going to pat some salespeople on the back in front of their peers this morning? Are you going to walk into your dealership and shake hands with all of your salespeople this morning, all the sales managers, the GM and the owner this morning? Are you going to walk back into the finance department and shake hands with the service director and the service advisors this morning? Are you going to be accessible to every employee that's in that dealership? Are you going to walk out today and are you going to make yourself accessible to customers when they walk into your showroom and are sitting down interested in looking at vehicles? Are you going to go talk to customers? Are you going to TO customers? Are you going to help the sales desk work deals today? Are you going to sit at the sales desk and help the sales managers read credit bureaus? Are you going to help them submit deals this morning? Are you going to help them submit deals and get the best calls this morning? Are you going to take time out of the equation for the customer? Are you going to respect their time and get them back into the F&I office within 8, 9, or 10 minutes? Are you going to give them a great value bill presentation this morning? Or are you going to do the same old thing that has gotten you the same old results for your whole career? What is it that you're going to do this morning? What, what, what is your value proposition? What is it? That's what I want you guys to focus on today. That's what I want you guys to focus on today, tomorrow, and going into this weekend. I want you guys to get numbers that you've never gotten in your F&I department this morning. I want you to elevate it today. I want you to impress your GM and your owner today. I want your entire team, salespeople, sales managers, your GM, I want them all to know your worth today. I want them to know your worth today. I want them to think that something has gotten into you. Something has changed. Something has allowed some, a light switch to go off in your head and you to become a different finance person. I want you to bring that level of value to your dealership today. Focus on your value proposition. Come on. Come on. I want you to focus on your value proposition today. Okay? Today. Now it's time for the change. We going to close October strong. And we going to close the rest of 2018 strong. And we going we going to close the rest of 2017 strong. And we going to dominate 2018 in F&I. Come on. Come on. We're going to dominate now. This is about domination because those who bring the value to the table, those who focus on the value proposition, dominate the others that don't. Remember that. Why would you be it like anybody else? Why rock at a level seven when 10 is available? Why be number three when number one is available? Come on. Value proposition from here on out. Focus on your value so that we can crush it, so that we can crush October, crush November, crush December, and then crush the rest of 2018. Thank you guys for being on the stream. I hope you got the value out of this live stream this morning. I care about you guys. I love you guys. I'm passionate about F&I. I know who you are. I know what you go through. I know what your worth is. And I'm asking you to focus on that today. Thank you guys for being on the stream. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Woo! Come on. Focus on your value today. Listen, if you haven't already checked out Dealer F&I University, if you haven't already checked this university out, I'm asking you, go to www.dealerfiuniversity.com and check it out. Look for yourself so that you train more than you can play, so that you can take it to the next level. And if you haven't already, then get registered for November 6th and 7th, the F&I Masterclass, FIMasterclass.com. Listen to me. I want to get in front of you. I want to train you live. I want to help you live. We're going to take this thing to the next level together. Woo! Thank you for all the love. Thank you for all the likes all the hearts. I love you guys. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I love you. Listen to me. Value prop proposition. Value proposition today. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.